So we are almost at our next anchorage. Uh, it's a place called Landrail Point at the top of the Crooked Islands. Um, it's been quite calm, about 7.78 miles basically to this anchorage after we left French Wells. Um, so it looks like there's a few boats up there but it's quite a big anchorage so we're looking forward to it. And now that we're getting more confident with anchoring this boat, maybe we'll go a little bit shallower. So it looks like there's quite a few monohulls so maybe we'll be able to go in a little bit closer towards the beach um, and get one of the good spots. While we're here we have a few boat jobs planned so a few bits and pieces that we've kind of been looking past while we've been exploring a little bit around French Wells. Um, so now we're going to just get into some of those boat jobs, get some things sorted and yeah, stay tuned. Hi, we are Erica and Davey, an adventurous, slightly crazy couple who has taken on the challenge that is a hurricane damaged catamaran. We have come so far and are beyond happy to be floating once more. Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. Take a chance. You never know how perfect something may turn out to be. Someone stole my sun behind a big black cloud. It's supposed to rain. It's supposed to rain in the next few days. It? Was it supposed to rain today? Or start tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh well, we'll rinse the decks. Get the salt off. <laughs> so, just want to touch on a question that we've been getting a lot lately. When are you going to get mast and sails? Um, we are headed north for the main reason that it was very difficult to finish the boat in the Dominican Republic. We are going to be heading to the States if we can get Davies B1, B2 visa so we can get into the States and finish off the boat properly. Ba, ba, ba. Da, 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 da. So we have arrived at Landro Point. It's beautiful. We're getting better at anchoring closer to the beach, but it's still quite deep even closer to the beach. I think it's really, really deep, quite even right on the beach. Yeah. Uh, but we've got better this time. What we in? Ah, uh, now we've dropped back in 14, so we, yeah. still, we still could have got closer. But this is comfortable and it's not far from shore. Yeah. So Davey is going to go dive on the anchor. It's one of our rituals when we get here, just to make sure we're set well, nicely. Mainly because we don't always do it, especially if it's murky, horrible water, or if it's nighttime or something like that. You just have to hope a little bit back down on the anchor and stuff like that. Um, but crystal clear waters like this, and we're also going to sit here through a little bit of an easterly, strong easterly, so it could be gusting in up to the 30s. So I want to know that it's dug in and we can just sit back and relax for the next few days and not worry about the anchor and at all. And so. also, as we put on that new bridle, it's quite long. So the other catamaran that kind of helped us set up that bridle, he said that the line should be about 25 feet. So it seems really yeah. long. So and we we're kind of new to catamaran, so we yeah. just took his word for it. So we want to just make sure everything's setting good with the uh, bridle system and just have a look so at Okay guys, there's obviously a load of you guys out here that know a lot more about bridle systems than we do. So what would you recommend? Our boat's 36 foot long. Does that make a difference on the, the length? I might Google this before you actually get back to me. Anyway, leave it in the comments guys about um, advice on the bridle, length, size, any information in bridles. Just chuck it all in the comments and have a good chat about that. Um, so Davey's also, as he jumps in, he's going to take his berry defender stick because there's been a barracuda that's been hiding underneath the boat. So we're not sure if he's here yet. It's a bit quick. I reckon he came uh, with us, to be honest. He came with yeah. us. So we got our He attacked the bridle seat. when I was trying to play with it last night. Yeah. <laughs> All, All right, right, I'm going to so. jump him. All right. He's not here. No? He's not here at the moment. He'll probably come find us later. jobs we wanted to get done while we were here at Landro Point is making water. So we were actually getting really low on our water. We were used to using more, I guess, being in loop run because it was so easy just to get some when we were running low. Uh, but now that we have to make it, uh, I think we're going to start being a little bit more conscious on how much water we're using. 
Um, so we have been running the water maker. We were using the Honda 2000 generator um, for a little bit, but it did run out of fuel. But it is peak of the day. There is some clouds in the sky, um, but now we are actually making water off of the Blue Etty. Um, so we showed you that before when we first had the Blue Etty. And this is awesome because it's basically using solar power and this lithium battery bank to make water. So no fossil fuels, which is fantastic. So we'll see how long we can actually do it off of this device. Um, it was at 100%, it's already down to 91. It's still getting anywhere from five to 600 watts of solar in it, but the water maker uses 1400 watts. So it's obviously gonna go down a little bit, but while well, it's the peak of the day, why not try? So there we go. Free water, it's great. Well, kind of free. <laughs> So how many gallons of water? I'm not sure how many we made in the end. We make about 20 bottles, so 20 times five. <laughs> That's 100. <laughs> yes, it is 100. I thought you were gonna say <laughs> it. I was waiting for you to say it. Yeah, no, about 100 gallons of water, plus or minus a little bit. And no, that was good. We ran a good chunk of it on the Bluetti. Bluetti did actually suddenly pass out it wasn't actually as full as it thought it was so i'm not sure if it needs calibrating in some way or form so i think we might have to reach out to the company about that um so we did have to throw the generator back on at the end just to produce i wanted another five gallons so i could do a quick backwash um as a rinse if you know what i mean i don't like to store the membrane with salt water in it i like to store it with fresh water in it so just just ran the generator for an extra five minutes at the end um, which is good but once we get this new inverter that we've got thanks very much to Michael Wilcox um, we've got a now a 3000 watt inverter with a 6000 surge on it so I mean that thing there could actually run the air conditioning not that we're going to we're actually going to be pulling them units out but that there will actually run the water maker so we won't have to use the generator at all and then it will be a much much quieter process and no fossil fuels so like anywhere, we have to do laundry. So that's another thing that we're gonna be taking off the list. So I got my washing machine out. So some of that extra water that we made, we're gonna use a little bit of it to do some laundry. So you may notice there's so much space in the cockpit. Um, so we were able to put the last of the diesel that was in the blue barrel into the tank. Um, We've decided to donate the blue barrel to some local fishermen. They gave us another fish, awesome. Uh, but we decided to donate it to them because we don't need it um, to fill that up here. Diesel here is right now $7.25 a gallon. So to fill up our main tank plus that is just way too much. Now that we've done the biggest hops, we don't need as much diesel on board. So we will be able to make do with the 55 gallon tank that we have on board. So. It makes some space and we were able to help out the local fishermen. So we need to fix up Littlefoot. Um, as we knew when we got it, she was a little bit rough and we fixed a few of the bits. But I've still got this flappy corner here. That's got to go on. And also the chaps. And to put the chaps on, i got to glue on the Velcro. So I've spent the last few hours over the last couple of days removing the glue from the old Velcro and cleaning up the dinghy a bit. So I've got a bit more cleaning up to do and then glue it on. So fingers crossed we have enough glue. So we're marooned on an island. Who knows how long we'll be here. But we have to let the glue dry. <laughs> dry put it a little bit further up the beach. So we started with the outside Velcro first and we used a two part epoxy glue, which we actually had enough of to finish the outside. Um, we did run out of glue for the inside section, but at least it's glued on on the outside. It looks fantastic. We're super happy. Look how fancy we look guys.
Okay, so we've just had the scariest couple nights with huge thunderstorms, huge squalls. So we are moving the boat into a marina and Davey will tell you a little bit more why. Alrighty guys, so you may notice it is absolutely hammering it down. Uh, massive thunder squalls. You may notice behind me guys, we are actually in a marina. So a little bit of an explanation as to what happened. So we were, or are still, in the uh, Cricket Islands. Uh, we're on a nice protected beach, this is two nights back. Nice protected beach, predicted easterly winds, and all of a sudden a squall came out of absolutely nowhere. Not predicted, not even on the radar showing up and it came out of the south where we weren't protected. So we had to sit through about four hours of hell, uh, 35 to 40 knot winds, uh, with just the arse of the boat literally pointing at the beach 100 feet behind us. Uh, the anchor held absolutely perfectly, glad to have the oversized anchor on. Um, so we rode that out, no problems, but it wasn't comfortable. So then yesterday morning, we were preparing to leave to go to Long Island. <coughs> Again, this weather came back in with the squalls out of nowhere. And just around the corner from us, um, there is a marina. And uh, we were chit-chatting with a few patrons, trying to decide what to do, should we go to sea? Uh, speaking with Chris Parker um, about different weather forecasts, what's coming along. And he said there's gonna be a lot more thunderstorms out of nowhere, blowing up the seas to 10 feet in different areas. So we decided to pull into this marina and um, take a bit of a break from it because there's nowhere else to hide around here without backtracking a very long way. So we decided to hightail it into here and possibly go this morning. Now this morning as you can see it's absolutely peeing it down. You haven't heard it but there's been a lot of very big lightning strikes as well. And unfortunately come this afternoon there's a northerly front coming, a cold front. And that's now got us stuck here. If we go to sea we won't get there before that arrives. So we're going to be beating into it to get somewhere. We're not in that much of a rush. This is why we don't have a schedule. So we're going to hang fire here, let the northerly pass, and uh, then we can crack on in a nice timely manner. Anyway, I'm going to show you the marina and there's, we got a new neighbors. I think they got a few more bucks than us because we haven't got any. As you guys know, we don't normally stay in marinas, um, but we did choose to stay in this one because we had one crazy night on the beach and we were both a bit shaken about it, so we took the chance to stay here. It's a very small marina, but it's quite pretty and it's quite unique. Uh, the people are very welcoming and friendly. Uh, <laughs> Fox has been happy to be on a marina dock as well because it means she gets to get on and off the boat a little bit more than normal. Uh, they have a nice cute little restaurant here and it is attached to an airstrip so you get to see some tiny little planes fly in so it's kind of cool. Out behind me there's Bird Rock. Um, we got to go there last time we were here. We're still hoping to make it out there this time but the weather's been a bit rough so there's not really a normal uh, landing spot for the dinghy so we need to have nice calm weather but the calm weather is when we want to leave to go to Long Island. So we have one day left that might be a good day to go. So we'll see what happens. Otherwise we'll sail, or well, we'll motor past it and uh, we'll show you from there. So we're set to leave the marina tomorrow morning. So we're gonna anchor back out on the same beach where we were before. Um, oh, one of those spiky things, they're even here. Uh, so we're gonna anchor out on that same beach that we kind of got thrown against, but it's gonna be nicer weather. So it should be nice and calm. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna move out there tomorrow and be back on anchor. So leaving the Crooked Island Marina and Lodge, the waves were a little bit funny getting out of the cut. They were coming kind of on the side of the boat. So we did get thrown around a little bit until we made the turn. It doesn't look too bad in the video footage, but the doors were definitely moving around. That's one of the major issues we have. We have to use bungees to keep them on. You can see Bird Rock out there as well, the super cool lighthouse. Unfortunately, we didn't make it out there this time. Hey, Fox. So it seems like this uh, airport or airstrip, I don't know if you can call it an airport, 
I see I feel like it's actually being used more this time there's two planes here now there was actually two planes a couple days ago as well so it's definitely been busier last time we were here we actually walked all the way up and it was really hot <laughs> but there wasn't much action so we were able to walk up the airstrip which is kind of cool I don't want to do it this time though because there's too many planes Fox come this way so on this island um, in the Bahamas in 2015 there was that hurricane Joaquin that came through and it did a lot of damage um, so behind me here there's still a house that uh, hasn't been rebuilt since we have heard that a lot of people did leave island and they didn't come back after the hurricane um, maybe too many storms had come through and caused too many issues and they didn't want to risk another one I mean, it is a beautiful spot. <laughs> so Fox hates the sound of waves and uh, she'll hightail it anytime we're close to waves. I'm surprised she's actually on the rocks. Normally she'd be up further. <laughs> I was trying to get wave sounds. <laughs> that one came close. 